Hello, I'm Drew from Outer Banks. Uh, don't watch this video if you haven't seen episode eight yet, okay? Watch it really fast and then, and then watch this video, okay? I'll stay here. You promised me that? Promise. trust you. I'll give you a day. Thank you. Well, that's also really kind of up too because she manipulated him, which I didn't really like. Um, I feel really bad. I just feel like Topper keeps getting the short end of the stick. I mean, for, Topper's just thrown off completely. He's, he's there at the jail. He's like, oh, we're going through with this. You, you promised me we're going to do this. And then all of a sudden, She's got this crazy story about how his dad goes missing. So I think he's trying to comprehend what in the world she's even talking about. And at the end of the day, I think his mantra, what's going on in his head is just like, don't do this to me again. But he's, he's giving her another chance and out of love. Um, and I think it's, it's, he's at his wit's end and he's just like, you know, it's, it's a moment of like, he's, what's going through, through his head is if she were to hypothetically just run off again how would he react? Um, so I think it was emotional for him. He was just like, all right, don't screw me over yet again. And I, I really dislike that. I, he's, but then he, it's just a domino effect of bad decisions sometimes. But yes, she, she does top her dirty. She, John B should not have chosen violence and top her had to take, you know, a fall. And, you know, he got a black eye, he got punched, he got hurt. Um, and then he got manipulated, and I was just in the middle of all of that. Since we've gotten back from the island, I've done some things that I regret. A lot. <clears throat> yeah. I feel, I feel like we've all done a thing or two that we regret. I think Sarah recognizes that her actions were wrong, and, and he's... She's, she's trying, you know, like she, she knows that, although it wasn't right, I think they both know that they haven't been great to one another in, in this period of time. You also have to understand, like, they've gone 20 plus episodes of, of just severe chaotic experiences and the PTSD that comes with that. And we see that with Sarah in the, in the first episode. And, and your judgment is going to be flawed at times. And so I think they're both looking at each other through a different lens now. And I, and I tried to look at her through the, the space of, of maybe Sarah's not the person that John V. once thought she was. And is this somebody he's ever going to trust again? And she's starting off with a really big aha moment and, and bringing something to the table that is, she knows is important to him. And I think in that moment, his, his, his judgment is less about like, okay, am I ready to trust Sarah again? I just need to save my father's life. So let's, you know, separate these things for a second and we'll deal with them in the manner that we can and in the timely manner that we can. But um, I think it's it's a lot of reservation and hesitation from him. I think it's her olive branch. Like, it's like if you can be honest and apologize and still try to do everything right, um, and you're you know still can't you know move past things that you know you're able to. Like, and it's kind of like you know what more can I do? And I think it's kind of like her last tail Mary. Like, I she's not changed. She's still the same person. Um, she still cares just as much. And, you know, she'd, she'd do anything for her friends in her relationship. That scene took about six days to film because every time we were supposed to film it, it would rain. So every time I think of that scene, I think that whole sequence right there, for whatever reason, we thought it was cursed, it just kept raining. It would continue to rain. It would lightning, it would thunderstorm, and we would be there all night and it would just keep raining. Um, so when we see that, I, we laugh because it's like, this is when we would literally just sit in our trailers. It's great. I like any scene where there's all six of us, I enjoy. You know, it's like, it is about this friend group, this community, these pogues, these people who are together, you know, and I think the audience likes when we're together. I think, you know, they are, some of our best moments are when we're together. And, you know, it's that friendship is, is the core of, of everything. So, you know, that, that kind of re-rally that Sarah Cameron has when she kind of rallies the troops again and we're all kind of on a plan, you know, can't, you can't deny that we're all kind of ready for this. You know, we've been off on our own for a little bit and just has not been hitting. So, you know, 
coming together and having another thing to kind of go for is like, that's all they could ever want. Look, I know you got planes coming in with bales of weed from South America, and they need to be unloaded, right? That's what my dad did for you. And I can do the same thing, Mike. He would come home and brag about how much he made one night, which was 10K, right? That's a lot of cheddar. Well, we're willing to do it for way cheaper, right? Like, like free. <laughs> Nothing's free. I live by that one, too. All right, so I'll be honest. All we want is just a little space in the cargo hold when you make your next trip down there. You just want to ride. Just want to ride. You know, I think JJ knows his plans are ridiculous, but he knows that they will work. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and that was a fun scene as well. It's just like you you have a connect, you're like Mr. Connection guy, and you know it's ridiculous, and then you have to play it down because you don't want to come out of who this man really is. Um, I also love finding that relationship to Barracuda Mike because I think Barracuda Mike to JJ was kind of like a legendary figure. He's heard of him. His dad's worked with him. His dad's scared of him. And for JJ to finally have the balls to go up to him, I think was a little bit of like a, all right, I'm about to talk to, you know, in JJ's mind, El Chapo kind of. Like, it's like, let's do it. All right, we're going to talk to the big man. Shit. Okay, play cool, all right? I'm play cool, play no, cool. No, you're not cool. You're I'm, I'm not super cool. cool. I'm, I'm super cool. I'm, I'm super as cool as it gets, all right? What are you doing? Don't, don't do that. Don't just do gonna, don't, don't just do that. I'm just going to wave. Don't do that. JJ? Hi, officer. Wait, Why'd you touch me? Well, don't wave at cops. Rule number one of driving you all. Five minutes. We've been in the car for five Again, minutes. Okay. Okay, just act very, very calm. Shit, he's coming. He's coming. Shit, damn it. Dude, goblin mode, all right? We gotta lose him, okay? Goblin mode? Yes, that's what we gotta do. Right? Hang on, hang on. I got this. JJ. I think that was my favorite portion to shoot this season because Rudy and I have I've been wanting to do that Jick Jackie, just back and forth. Let's start a plan and know it's going to unravel, but give it a shot and what the hell, we'll see where it goes. Um, but that's just, the, it's Tweedledee and Tweedledum. I don't know. I mean, there's no better way to say it. And, you know, let's smuggle drugs to South America or to find our way back to where we need to go. Uh, and I, I love, you know, working with Rudy, and, and we had such a good time putting that together and, and going on that journey. And it's just... I think that's what you love about those two characters, is that they, they genuinely think that this might be a good idea, and I think there's a little hesitation in there at times. But, um, but yeah, that's, that's the, the love of the show, is that the most absurd circumstance might work, uh, and obviously it doesn't really pan out in their favor. So, I think Jay is happy that he's doing something that like he, he knows that his dad kind of was able to do a little bit, uh, or not do, but just like he kind of wound up his dad. His dad would just unload it, he was actually like transporting it. Uh, so having that little competition with his dad is back of his mind was there. Um, and like saying to John B, we got this, dude, it's chill, you know, like trying to calm him down, like it's gonna be fine. Like it's just a U-Haul with luggage um, uh, in the back. And uh, it was a comedic time. It was a really comedic time because I think that just plays. And I think that's what the season needed in just a little bit, is a little bit of comedy in that, in the, in that stage of the game. Oh yeah, it was a riot, it was a riot. We, um, <laughs> we had so many different ideas. Uh, I don't know if they, I think it's still in there. They rip, we ripped the map, not planned whatsoever. Um, that was completely on accident, but we just kept going, of course. And yeah, we ripped the map in half. And I, that was just like, oh, that's perfect. And I think it made it in there, so yeah. It definitely did. Sweet, <laughs> great. I think the Raves crossed the line of no return so, um, at multiple points in the show. <laughs> like, you know, like uh, murder. Yeah, that's that's a line. Uh, attempted murder of his own sister, that's another line. Um, you know, I think he's, 
it's just a challenge now to see how, how far we can push it. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I think, I th obviously, I think there's always hope between family. Um, you know, he's done some terrible things, and I think, I think, you know, the physical altercation and then the, the decision to, you know, hire a hit on his dad shows you that he's still wrestling with his own demons quite a, quite a bit. Um, I mean, he's pushed it to the point of, like, you know, uh, you know, inflicting a lot of harm on a lot of people and people that he loves. It, it, the, I think what it does show you is like, okay, there is some, there is a seedling, there's a little, there's a little tiny part of him deep down inside that, that has the capacity for guilt and remorse. Um, you know, it just, it may take someone pushing and prodding him and opening him, him up to like actually realize that. I mean, I hope so. I don't want him to be like, I mean, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> He's not full psychopath. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, either would be fun. <laughs> like, Oh my gosh, when I was reading the, the script for episode eight, when, when Topper lights the chateau up, I was just like, man, how am I gonna get to this place? You know, how are you gonna justify uh, burning a house down? Um, so, I mean, I went into that scene and I was just like, all right, like, you know, where's Sarah, is she, is she here? And then I see them hooking up, Topper sees them hooking up. And I think it's just betrayal and, and, and then it's just, sadness and then it's anger it's all these different emotions that just kind of combusted and his way of reacting was you know i'm just done with this i'm done with all of this i'm just burning all this down so i think that was his emotion and then he manifested that physically by just lighting the place up <laughs> so in episode eight yeah i'm working with uh valerie weiss who is an amazing amazing person to work with amazing director and um, yeah we sat down and talked about this scene because it, it is a lot to kind of get to that moment um, like I said before the betrayal happening just we just walked through all the emotions um, that Topper's going through um, and I think the scene turned out really well um, you know she did an amazing job directing that that was a really hard scene we we got rained out I think twice we we're literally about to start filming I'm like in the in the zone in the moment Thunder strikes, the storm's coming in, so we had to call set twice, and on the third time we finally got it. So um, I felt like it was the never ending scene. <laughs> I thought, well, where does Topper go from here? Does Sarah take him back after this? Truthfully, like as a fan, I was like, dang, I don't think they can be together after this. Like, this might be this might be it for Topper and Sarah. Like, I don't I don't know how he comes back for, from this. Same thing, that was the same type of stuff we could not get through um, because of weather, but it was, it, was so much, it was just late nights. Like it was all overnight, so it was just late nights. We were all delirious, like filming all those scenes and we would just be on the hammocks. And also that was the last time um, we were able to film at the Chateau. So like that location was gone. So it was very like reminiscing and they were kind of walking me because I wasn't there the first time when everyone got to the Chateau. So they were all telling me stories of like their first time at the Chateau and these are their experience and it was, it was cool. It was really cool. I mean, it's kind of what I've been saying is JJ doesn't know how. He doesn't know how because um, he hasn't seen how to uh, so much. And so he doesn't know how to exactly open up, say I'm sorry, get all that out. Uh, so that's kind of what I was thinking in that scene. Yeah, it's weird, because like Topper had that redemption there where he helped and cared for the post for a second, and he, you know, he really was coming through, and then next thing you know, I think, yeah, I don't know, I think he, you know, if it was Topper's choice, I want to speak, don't want to speak for Austin, but I think if it was Topper's choice, he would just would have done it to John B, uh, rather than all the Pogues. I don't know, that might be an assumption, don't know for sure. Yeah, I, you know, the scene prior to that, where, where you know John B. kind of gives Sarah this, this honest take on who he is, and this is who I am going to be, and, and I am my father's son, and I don't think I'm going to change, and if this is not what you 
signed up for, or this isn't what you want to do, I understand. I think it's a really beautiful moment, um, but in true Outer Banks fashion, all good things come to a very immediate close. Um, so you get the instant gratification of like, okay, you know, I think they're going in the right, right direction. And then I just feel bad for Topper, man. Like the dude just tried to do the right thing. He helped the Pogues out in the, in the train situation. And you know, he's, he's doing right by Sarah. As soon as he feels like things are going the right way, he finds out that she's bailed him out of jail. She's getting a plane for him. And now they're back together and he gets to see it firsthand, you know? So it's sort of a, it's a insane situation because it's similar in the sense of what John B. was feeling. Except Topper's really, he's just going based off of what he knows, you know, that what his upbringing is and, and having things handed to him and, and his environment has been so sheltered, right? So when he finally feels that he has that thing back and then it gets taken from him again, not saying it was justified because arson is not a justifiable, you know, excuse for, for feeling that, but um, it was wild. And there's a lot of reasons as to why we chose that. Um, logistically and from a produ production standpoint, um, which I think will eventually come out into the world. But uh, we, had to, we had to say goodbye to the Chateau, which was not fun, because I, I love that place. Yeah, I mean, we don't even know he did it. Like, we're just kind of like, uh, no fire, fire. And like, uh, you know, everybody's kind of start, starting to have their moments with their person and gets cut short by uh, attempted murder again, you know, arson. So. You know, it was like, we just kind of were like playing the, uh, the direness of that scene. Like, we're all trapped in a fire. <laughs> like, how do we get out of here? And um, then it's a real sad moment right afterwards when, like, the chateau is gone. And we have, yeah, we have a, a, a thing to do, but it, it really is kind of like the end of an era. You know, like, that's where we grew up. You know, John B., especially John B., JJ, and Pope. Like, since they were in middle school, like, they spent a lot of time there, a lot of time with Big John, a lot of time fishing and, 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 you know, boating and, and surfing and coming back there and playing games and just kind of palling around there. That's where all those memories are. And when that place is gone, it's like, it's a really heartbreaking moment, I think, for everyone. Okay, now Topper did bad. <laughs> and I was less uncomfortable. I was less uncomfortable about what Sarah did after he burned someone's literal house down. That was, that was a fail. It was a big L. Um... Don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah, um, that didn't need to happen. That's all I have to say. It was sad to see the chateau burn. I'm also like, are we gonna rebuild it? Like, that's such an iconic set. What do we do now? Where are we gonna live? I don't know. Let's keep watching, I guess. Y'all watch so we can get a season four. And then we'll find out. Is Topper going to regret burning down the chateau? I mean, I think reality is going to hit him. Uh, maybe repercussions are going to hit him. Who knows who's going to find out if it will get down to you know Topper, or if he's in a place of I don't really care. If maybe he goes rafe on everyone, he's just like screw it. I don't really know where he's at in his head at this point. Um, so we'll get there. I think this is this is pretty brutal. This is, this is villainous, uh, if that's a word. And <laughs> he's he's you know he's burned out. He's put all their lives at risk by by burning the house down. And um, I don't think he was reacting, um, you know, like he was wanting to hurt them or kill them. I think he was just like I'm I'm done with John B. And I'm gonna take something from you because you took something from me. And we'll see. Uh, We'll see how he, he reacts to everything else. I think the scene where I burned the chateau down was, uh, was challenging, not only because we got rained out twice and it was just like getting to that emotional place so many times uh, was stretching and, and draining. Um, and we did you know, a lot of different takes and you know, it all came together really nice. But I think just me as an actor, like justifying all those emotions to burn a house down was uh, was a lot, and I was proud of the work. I love playing the villain. I mean, Drew and I were just talking about this. It's it's a lot of fun. It's it keeps the story moving, keeps things interesting, um, but it can be you know it's a lot of emotion and a lot of um, work that you got to put in. It can be draining, and everyone has their own method. So I think it's just figuring out that method that is healthy for you, where you can show up on set, do your work, and then go home and get a good night's rest.